Hello everybody and welcome to Lyranara.com, your leading resource for holistic health in North America. And today marks the second installment in our four-part series about how you become sick and what are the most important holistic devices to keep you balanced, to prevent illnesses and to heal them once they've occurred. Um, today is going to be specifically about the autonomic nervous system, how to evaluate it with the most uh, modern holistic devices and then how to balance it out, um, why it is important um, and uh, what role the autonomic nervous system plays in your total health. Uh, we're going to talk about it again uh, in this presentation but only shortly if you want to go more in depth I refer you to the first part of this presentation series how you get sick it's called and then we talk uh, very much in depth about why the autonomic nervous system is so uh, crucial to your health today uh, we're gonna present you two amazing uh, technologies also to keep your autonomic nervous system uh, in balance. Uh, one is the biotonometer. This is an evaluation, a holistic evaluation device uh, of your autonomic nervous system, which we, with which you can uh, track your uh, success of your therapy, etc. And we're going to go in depth there. And uh, then we're going to present you also with the Kindling Easy system. This is not only an evaluation system, but also uh, one for balancing out um, the autonomic nervous system, which is extremely intuitive and easy to use and can be used uh, even at home without much training. So look forward to some amazing information. Uh, and as always, thanks for being with us. Uh, let's dive right into it. So let's kick this off by reminding ourselves uh, some of the most important or crucial information that uh, was presented uh, in the first part of this presentational series about uh, what the autonomic nervous system is, how it works and why it's so important. So uh, we learned that all diseases start with a psychological traumatic event or unresolved conflict in the first part of this presentational series and that emotions and uh, associated feelings are processed in the emotional brain which is also called the limbic system which uh, in turn is interlocked with the autonomic nervous system and then with the hormonal system. So the autonomic nervous system receives the signals from the outside stimuli uh, or the limbic brain um, and then especially from the hypothalamus and uh, influences in turn all inner organs. So you could say literally that the autonomic nervous system is the control tower of all your organs. And therefore, the therapy must always start with emotional releases, uh, karma cleansing and subliminal programming. But if a period uh, of longer than three to seven days uh, has passed and this uh, cleansing or emotional release has not taken place, the ANS uh, will bother the autoregulation uh, capabilities of the patient or his organs. Um, as it does not uh, process correctly the signals from the limbic and hormonal system and therefore a training or a rebalancing of the ANS as well as a correct evaluation of course first um, is absolutely necessary once we've passed uh, this stage and if we do not rebalance the ANS uh, after four to seven years uh, the patient can already develop a morbidic or acidic state which leads to multiple chronic diseases so it's extremely crucial to take care of this balancing of the ANS uh, in case the multiple chronic diseases uh, have already developed uh, there is a very complex uh, therapeutic approach necessary that also again involves uh, ANS rebalancing and a connective matrix it's called bioterrain therapy and we're going to talk about this too in this series uh, and in this video, we're going to concentrate on two systems, as I said already, that can help you rehabilitate and to retrain or rebalance your ANS uh, to auto-regulate uh, your organs again properly uh, and to also to evaluate the therapies, their success and the medications you're administering to the patient. And uh, these two exceptional devices are the biotonometer developed by Dr. Uh, Rilling and the Kindling Easy developed by the leading 
manufacturer of bioresonance devices in the world, Kindling from Germany. And uh, they have developed a system that is called the Kindling Easy, which is a very special kind of uh, systemic functional bioresonance. A small recap again about the ANS. It's also called a vegetative nervous system and it's a system containing the most motoric neurons supplying the glands, the smooth muscles and the inner organs uh, as well as the heart. It's called autonomic because it works without the centers of the cerebral cortex and thus it functions without a conscious mind control. Uh, it works uh, also is interlocked with the hormonal system and is controlled by the hypothalamus and the brainstem and uh, especially by the medulla oblongata and the brainstem pons. It is uh, responsible for all of your vital functions including blood circulation, the heartbeat, breathing, body temperature regulation, blood pressure regulation, and also control this, um, the gastric juice secretion. So it literally controls all of your inner organs and workings. That's why it's so important to keep it always balanced, of course. Here we can see the two components of the ANS. Uh, they are working antagonistically, so one balances out the other, uh, and they are the sympathetic nerve, also S uh, called, uh, and the parasympathetic nerve, or vagus, that is also desc uh, described uh, with a P often in liter uh, literature. Uh, all sympathetic fibers pass the sympathetic trunk, a ganglionic chain on the left and on the right of the spinal cord, as you can see in the picture on the right. The parasympathetic path crosses the 3rd, 7th, 9th and 10th uh, cranial nerve uh, and some nerves emerging at the uh, sacrum and the vagus leads to all organs in thorax uh, and the abdomen. Uh, all the vital inner organs are always regu regulated by the two motor nerves, S and P. They are acting antagonistically, so one activates the sympathetic and the one sedates the parasympathetic and uh, uh, it's more or less like a yin and yang of uh, autoregulation. And here we have uh, all of the organs and how they are being influenced by the sympathetic in red and the parasympathetic nervous system in blue. Here, for example, uh, first you have the eyes. Um, the sympathetic would cause a chordiastasis, a contraction of the ciliary muscle for close vision, and uh, as opposed to a contraction of the pupil that uh, would be caused by a parasympathetic nervous system. The heart, for example, sympathetic would lead to an increase of the beat frequency and beat strength and an extension of the coronary vessels as well as the a reduction of the transmitting time. On the other side, a parasympathetic would cause the beat to slow down, would cause a contraction of the coronary vessels and an extension of the transmitting time. Etc. Uh, Etc. Et As you can see here, uh, if you are interested in each one of the organs, just post the presentation right here and have a look at it by by yourself. Another closer look at the sympathetic nerve. Uh, this uh, part of the ANS that uh, works uh, by activating the organs, and here you have all of the organs. Um, and the effect of the sympathetic uh, uh, response to them, like for example for the eyes a chordiastasis, for the mouth an inhibition of the salivary gland, etc. etc. And in the next slide we're going to look at uh, the other part of the equation, the parasympathetic nerve and its effect on the ANS. And here is the parasympathetic uh, part of the equation and again you see here for each organ, it's gonna balance it out just in the other uh, direction. So this one is gonna sedate more and the other one is gonna activate more, but the two must be in perfect balance as mentioned. So this is exactly where we need to take care. So I think we've understood now all why it's so important to keep your ANS and it's auto-regulative uh, uh, 
purpose in perfect balance and in a perfect working order and condition. Unfortunately, it's not so easy to measure the ANSS activity, uh, but thanks to some amazing people over the years, uh, there are nowadays uh, holistic methods, non-invasive uh, holistic methods that enable us to check the ANSS uh, activities um, in very precise detail and to take measures in order to keep it balanced. And one of those systems is uh, called a bi biotonometer. Uh, the whole measurement uh, uh, method is called biotonometry and is the only method which makes it possible to record the ANSS activity in just seconds. It works by uh, measuring electronically the resistance, the so-called R value, as well as the capacity, the so-called C value. Uh, it's the single method uh, capable of measuring the ANS uh, correctly. Uh, many other methods consider themselves to be capable of achieving this too. Unfortunately, their results have not been proven in practice yet, uh, contrary to the biotonometer. Um, here, the parasympathetic and sympathetic activity uh, are influenced by uh, some parameters that are being, uh, of course, recorded and tracked here. One of them is mineral balance uh, and trace elements then acidosis, alkalosis, so the pH ratios, the redox system, uh, the temperature or the pulse and uh, chronobiology as outlined by Dr. Hoff uh, 70 years ago already and the nerve conduction system and the glands. And here we see Dr. Matt uh, Siegfried Rilling, the father of biotonometry. Uh, and he said that he was working for 56 years and could not have treated his patients with such a success without the biotonometry and the device that he created called a biotonometer. Um, he, he was a pioneer in this uh, area because he identified very early on in his practice the importance um, uh, of, of the ANS and of uh, as a compass system to treat patients and uh, how important it is to track its balance. Uh, and yeah, he was asked in an interview here, why do you think the biotonometer is so unknown? And he replied very intelligently that the introduction of frozen food took 83 years, accepting uh, steam navigation at least 38 years. And TV and computers were introduced 20 years after being invented. So only because it has not reached the mainstream yet doesn't mean that uh, it's not uh, extremely helpful. And here the results, as we will see in, in the continuation of this presentation, are amazing and have been proven over and over again over the years uh, in the whole world. So let's have a look at uh, all of this. But first, some uh, background information on what exactly is being measured by by tonometer, uh, the resistance and capacity, as we've mentioned already, but what are those two values? So the tissue's resistance is uh, significant uh, for the parasympathetic nerve activity, and the capacity is significant for the sympathetic nerve activity. And uh, with biotonometry, you measure both of those values and you can work out a better treatment by learning in detail about the cause of the disease stages as they are mirrored in the ANSS activity. And here, over the years, there have been some values uh, established. Um, the normal R value should be 8 to 15 kilo ohms. The C value for a healthy patient should be 0 0.15 to 0 0.25 microfaradays. The S dominance range should be 1.5 to 8 kilo ohms and 0 0.25 to 0 0.5 microfaradays. And the P dominance range should be 15 to 150 kilo ohms and 0 0.03 to 0 0.15 microfaradays. There are no gender differences. Uh, children are normally more sympathetically dominated with a value of 6 kilo ohms and 0 0.27 microfaradays. Elderly people are mostly parasympathetically dominated with R values higher than normal. 
and the measured values can give you insights about the therapy to be applied and how the uh, patient is reacting to the therapy you're already applying and the medicine he's receiving as we will see in some real life examples uh, very shortly and um, the normal PNS range doesn't mean that the patient is 100% healthy. It only means that he is balanced properly and treated correctly and that his body can auto-regulate itself correctly. Here we can see the so-called balance beam system that Dr. Reeling uh, developed to allocate correctly the diseases to the specific organs based on the values measured. And here on the left, we see the resistance in kilo ohms and on the right scale, we see the capacity uh, and the whole scales that he developed that we're, we're going to have a look at in more detail in, over the next two slides. And here we have uh, the case of a vagus irritation with all the scale of the values that uh, are going to be measured in, in the case of a vagus irritation and the corresponding uh, problems uh, within the, with the organs. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you are interested in this in detail, pause the presentation right here and you will see all of the corresponding uh, diseases or unbalances, for example, the vessels uh, of the skin and uh, mucous membranes, uh, increase uh, in perfusion, um, then the vessels of the digestive organs increase in perfusion, the gallbladder contracts, etc., etc. So he tracked very precisely over the years the values and the corresponding uh, imbalances in your organs and the ANS. And here, of course, we can see all the effects of a sympathetic irritation, again, with uh, the scale of the values that are going to be measured in this case and the effect of these measurements of these imbalances on the, each organ, as depicted in this wonderful graph. Again, if you want to have a more closer look at it, then just pause the presentation right here and feel free to look at it in detail. There are some symptoms that are dominant uh, for the parasympathetic as well as the sympathetic irritation. Here sympathetic irritation is accompanied normally by typical symptoms such as uh, glycogenolysis in the liver, thyroid excessive secretion stimulation, uh, increase of blood circulation in the muscles and tremor known as chorodiastasis. Uh, parasympathetic paralysis uh, is accompanied by a decrease in salivation, for example, atonia of the gallbladder or inhibition of the bile secretion. So here you, you have a lot of data uh, about what um, each measurement means and some symptoms that uh, have been proven to correspond to imbalances in the ANS. So let's have a look at how this wonderful device, the biotonometer, works in detail. It measures in just seconds the status of the ANS. So the patient just needs to take two hand electrons in his hands for that. You press the button for testing or slash measuring. And after one second, uh, the R values will, will appear in kilo ohms for the vagus and the, the C values in microfarads for the sympathetic. Shortly afterwards, after five minutes, the device will switch itself off automatically. The data can then be transferred or will be transferred automatically, of course, to a computer. To create a complete ANS profile, it is necessary to control and measure several times during a 30-minute uh, period. And the final results after this 30-minute period will also be displayed, of course, uh, on a computer screen. Uh, the progress of the treatment can be then recorded and evaluated after 90 minutes or after several days. And we're going to have a look at some real life examples over the next uh, part of the presentation to see how this works in practice. And as you can see from the graph at the bottom of the page, the results are very clearly and graphically uh, indicated, so it's easy to interpret them. And you're going to see over the next examples that you too 
we learn very quickly how to interpret them. It's not uh, rocket science, so to speak, but let's go through the examples so you can see for yourself how easy it is to judge what is happening with a patient. Here we have uh, Walter, a male patient of 72 years. He had complaints about heartache and the doctors recommended uh, for him to undergo a heart surgery. He was uh, treated with a heart specific preparation of uh, strophantus. And here we see that the medication shows a reactive behavior. After 90 minutes, the last measured final value was 20 points lower, uh, indicating that he is responding pretty well to this Trafantos treatment and the patient lost eventually his local heart and chest pain and the surgery was even cancelled. Next up is Wolfgang, a 60 year old male patient. He had colon cancer that was metastasizing already. He was treated with Panglasam OM Colledoron of 25 drops. And the curve here shows a clear decrease with a synchronal C value decrease. And the C value, again, for your understanding, is the line on the bottom. And the one on top is the R value. Uh, after 60 minutes, uh, both the R and the C value increase again, as you can see in this spike. And with it, uh, the 90 minute periods, you will see an overall improvement in the value. The output was 36 kilo ohms and the initial uh, output was 84 kilo ohms. Uh, the end result was that the patient survived this cancer for years and without any chemotherapy or surgery. And here again, the biotonometer helped uh, track the success of this medication and of the therapy given to this patient in real time. Let's look at another patient, Siegfried, 82 years old, another male patient, uh, multiple disorders. He was reporting cardiac insufficiency after emergency operation of perforated colonic uh, diverticulum and senilities. He was treated with Vitrogen 80, 68, 70 and 71 for neurotherapy. And here, if we look at the curve, we can show a clear, uh, we can see a clear decrease of the R values from uh, 78 to 42 kilo ohms. That's the upper graph. And uh, the C value remains pretty constant, so it's not reacting a lot. So showing that the therapy is well received and tolerated. The R uh, value at the therapy starting point was 78 kilo ohms, and after nine minutes it went down already 38 kilo ohms, so showing that the therapy was very successful. And this patient was uh, reporting afterwards uh, that his health state had improved significantly and uh, his overall well being as well. Another example, this time a female patient, 83 years old. Uh, she was suffering from polyrheumatic syndrome, arthrosis, uh, circulatory disorders and diabetes. She was treated with Vitrogen, a Revit organ 43. And if we look here at the curve, we show a clear increase of the R values, the upper graph again, or the line, and then a decrease and finally heightened values within 90 minutes overall, the meaning that the therapy was very successful, the pain diminished significantly and her cardiovascular system stabilized. Again, here the biotonometer helped tremendously in administering and choosing the right therapy for this patient and as we see, it all worked out pretty much in her favor. Another female patient, uh, Ursula, 66 years old. Uh, she was suffering from mammal cancer that was metastasizing. She was treated with ozone and homeopathic immunotherapeutic vitrogen preparations. If we have a look here at the curve, we see, see several strong reactions of the ANS. And thereafter, the health condition stabilizes significantly. So the patient is experiencing uh, well-being now and the changes in the curve show a tendency of uh, normalization towards the end, uh, meaning that the therapy is received uh, successfully by this patient. But of course, the biotonometer system allows us also to uh, see 
when a therapy method is not working in our favor and a patient's favor of course here we have a, another female patient uh, Rika she was also suffering from mammal cancer with multi-sided metastasis extreme malignancy was determined by the histological examination she was treated also with vital gun combinations uh, atrocalan uh, also on intramuscular uh, administrated separately on different uh, days if we look at the curve however we see that the c values do not uh, react anymore at all in these patients so that would uh, signify that the prognosis for this treatment is very bad and unfortunately he also the patient died shortly thereafter but again the biotonometer by measuring the reaction of the ans was able to predict that this therapy method unfortunately was not working out for this patient again a very good tool nonetheless for tracking um, the, the therapy here is a more positive uh, or upbeat example it's a male patient 45 years old he was suffering from seminoma and secondary esophagus carcinoma then she he was treated with vitrogen combinations atrochelon and uh, ozone was administered intramuscularly to him in uh, different days and here we see a different reaction from the previous patient the curve peaks from a single active administration of the medication already signifying that the therapy is working for this patient and in the end he significantly prolonged his life another patient that was able to have a healthy and a happy life for much longer than the doctors predicted him to have uh, he was also suffering from metastasizing hyper um, uh, hypernephroma um, sympathicon cancer shown in the original curve as well he was uh, treated with additive non-toxic therapy according to dr reeling and here if we look at the curve it peaks to an r value of 64 with an antagonistic behavior in the c curve so you see that the c curve is reacting downwards while the r curve is peaking upwards showing a, a very positive reaction of the immune system to this treatment and the end result was that the patient prolonged his life for five years and had a good quality life afterwards and last but not least let's look at a long-term curve uh, or long-term tracking of the treatment and its success here this uh, one was tracked over three years this patient um, was suffering from bronchopneumonia and he was treated with Penglosan G every second day, twice uh, 15 drops, and in an interval of zone therapy with 600 gamma each. And if we look at the curve, we see that after the ozone therapy, uh, each time he had tightened R values, and thereafter step by step normalization, which uh, means that this patient is uh, having a good prognosis uh, overall and uh, in the end. Uh, we can see that this treatment as tracked by the biotonometer was very successful for this patient so let's sum the biotonometer up before we move on to the other amazing device that can help you balance out and and uh, keep your ans healthy um, the biotonometer in our uh, opinion should be in any practice uh, clinic or hospital as we have seen there are thousands of cases of patients that have been treated over the years uh, and where the success of the therapy has been measured with a biotonometer and it's always uh, has turned out to be extremely extremely accurate and helpful uh, in administering the right therapy to the right patient um, there is no other device that can evaluate the ans and guide you during uh, the most suitable therapy application just like the biotonometer does uh, based on this r and c values it can uh, avoid uh, or it can be avoided that you irritate either the parasympathetic or the sympathetic too much in your therapy uh, especially in case of parasympathic uh, cotonia irritation may be a result of the wrong medication and uh, this you can totally avoid by using the biotonometer as it is so accurate 
Uh, placebo effects can also be measured. Uh, good therapies must also be, of course, customized and do not apply the standard care procedures. And here, the biotonometer measures life, the effects of any therapy, any dosage on any kind of patient for a, a, any known health condition and uh, it can help you administer just the right kind of customized uh, therapy to your patient and uh, his or her condition. It's very fast as we've seen, it takes only uh, seconds to measure and then uh, a 90 minutes uh, session to balance it out. It's very fast, therefore realistic and the effects uh, and the results are reproducible and the whole procedure is very cost effective. Um, it is not recommended this device uh, to be used by patients alone, so we do, would recommend that uh, a doctor supervises or a therapist. Um, but as you have seen, it's not uh, very complicated to use. There is a very comprehensive handbook that comes with the device, and uh, we, of course, are also always here to help you with your questions if you cannot interpret any of the results. Uh, and next, we're going to look uh, at another amazing device uh, called the Kindling Easy. So what is the Kindling Easy device? Uh, it's an automated system with self-calibration that uh, performs dynamic treatments and measurements of the ANS. It's 100% customized therapy to the patient. Uh, every two minutes, there is a recurrent self-calibration and uh, measurement uh, loop that uh, for a total of seven therapy loops per session. It's a very simple measurement technique, hand-to-hand -hand, uh, skin conductivity measurement. It's easy to use privately also, this device, and uh, it's also very, very convenient to delegate the work on the device to less qualified personnel, like a nurse, as it is very, you, you cannot, it's fail-proof, this device. You know, there is no interpretation as the uh, device is automatically choosing the therapy and the balancing sequence based on the measurement. There is no input from uh, the therapist. So it can be used even by unexperienced peer persons. It's a dynamic, it's automated, and it's error-free. Uh, and it's, uh, the, it's always based on the most recent measurement. Um, it uses complex autoregulative bioresonance procedures based on the response of the ANS. It's very intuitively uh, operated and you need no additional computer to plug it into. Uh, you have a very nice graphic representation of the treatment changes on its built-in display or built-in color display even. Uh, it's very immediate and comprehensible to the results, how they are displayed as we're going to see uh, very shortly and uh, you get a very high patient acceptance thereby as uh, the patient can easily easily see what the results mean and what is happening during the therapy so it's very efficient you waste no time it's very cost effective uh, and easy to use for doctors as well as patients and we're going to show you a little bit more detail how this all works so here you see how this whole kindling easy system works it uh, measures for five seconds through the hand electrodes on the right. Then it applies a therapy for two minutes and it repeats over the other hand ele uh, electrodes that you see on the left. The one is placed on the organ that is affected the most and the other one uh, on the hands uh, or on your legs. And um, here it repeats this loop seven times automatically. Um, you can also per Put into and on the left there is an input beaker where you can plug in some body fluids like blood or urine or saliva and on the right you can create custom homeopathic remedies for support of your treatment. So let's go a little bit more in detail through how the system exactly works. Um, well you're going to record some endogenous, endogenous uh, frequency patterns. They are uh, going to be collected through hand-to-hand -hand measurement using the two brass gold-plated electrodes that you see here also in the picture on the right. 
Uh, well, the sweat production is modulated by the autonomic nervous system. And uh, of course, the ANS, as we've learned, is correlated with the body's total regulatory capacity. Why are we measuring at the hands? Because the palms of the hands have a very high density of sweat glands of more than 400 sweat glands per square centimeter. And the sympathetic nervous system increases sweat gland secretion while the parasympathetic reduces sweat gland secretion. So it's a very uh, good measuring point. Um, then also you can use additionally uh, the exogenous frequency patterns. So all of the body fluids that can be plugged in into the input beaker, such as blood, urine and saliva to further support your, your measurement. Let's have a look at how these uh, results then of the measurement are being displayed in the system. We have three lines here. The green one uh, with a value of 40 is the normal energetic range. Then on top we have a strong energetic over excitation. Uh, and in blue we have an energetic deficit. Um, and here again for the specialists in classic uh, EDS and bioresonance therapy, they should note that uh, the values here in this system are slightly different than they would be in their classic EDS system. So here the blue line corresponds to 50 SKTs, the green to 80 SKTs and the red line to 100 SKTs. But it's only important for people who are working with classic EDS to know. Uh, for us, important to know it's that the red line is going to be a dominant sympathetic. The blue line is going to be a dominant parasympathetic situation. And we want to see something uh, along the green line. So low values indicate relatively little activity of the sweat glands of the pumps and can be interpreted as a situation dominated by a parasympathetic uh, system and the high values indicate increased activity of the sweat glands and can be interpreted, of course, as dominant sympathetic uh, ANS. And we're going to look at some real life examples and measurements and how to interpret them over the next couple of slides. Here we can see some real life measurements and uh, how to interpret them. So the first one on the left is a pretty flat line around the green value. And that would mean that this patient's uh, ANS is energetically balanced, um, it, but it has a sluggish autoregulation capability as we don't have a uh, zigzagging motion in this line. The second line, it's an energetically balanced uh, uh, patient with a strong autoregulation as we see this zigzag. The third one on the bottom left is an energetically low patient with slight parasympathetic uh, uh, autoregulation and energy increase towards the end of the measurement. Uh, the fourth uh, example is an energetically balanced patient with very good autoregulation as we've seen a very nice zigzagging line based on a good ANS response. Uh, and it's the best autoregulative curve that you can see. Uh, the fifth example is an energetically balanced uh, patient with favorable autoregulation with a tendency toward a parasympathetic dominance with an energy drop towards the end. Uh, sixth example would be an energy low as the curve is close to the blue line. Parasympathetic autoregulation with a jump towards a higher energy at the end of the therapy, known as the ignition, meaning that this patient is reacting to the therapy. And here we have some more examples illustrating to you how easy it is to, to understand and interpret the measurements and how this device works. It's very intuitive how it displays everything, and uh, here in the top left, we have um, example number seven. It's a soft autoregulation with a slight tendency to a stress accumulation. It's sympathetically driven and is specific for disease conditions. If you see a curve like this, then in the next example, we have a parasympathetically driven soft autoregulation again with a um, strong jump into the energy normalization 
and ANS balanced towards the end, indicating that the therapy is working pretty well on this patient. And next example, we have an energetically exhausted patient. It goes even below the 10 value of the blue line with a parasympathetic moderate autoregulation and a drop in energy level to eliminate stress. This is often characteristic for the healing phase. Uh, example on the upper right, number 10, is a parasympathetically dominant start with a strong ignition of uh, normalization towards the end. Uh, next example shows the same situation as above, but uh, with a stronger effect towards the end. So this patient is reacting even better to the therapy and the balancing. And last but not least, we have a typical autoregulation rigidity. Uh, the meaning that this patient is probably very sick and he shows no indication of a healing effect uh, regulation, uh, which means that unfortunately for this patient, uh, this uh, therapy is not working as supposed. Let's sum up uh, then uh, the benefits for your health uh, of the Kindling Easy system. As we've seen, it's an extremely efficient uh, system for patients as well as practitioners. It's uh, very time efficient, uh, very quick in its application and the therapy results can be tracked uh, very easily. It is triggering and training the body's systemic autoregulation capacity and uh, therefore it is a real holistic therapy. It's very comfortable and, as the name already implies, easy to use. A therapy procedure has no risks and no side effects. That's why we also recommend this device for people, uh, for private users at home. You cannot do anything wrong with the system. The homeopathic remedies that you can create with the system are fully customized and easy to follow up uh, in the next session of the therapy. Uh, it, uh, the nice way in which it displays the results uh, allows you for a high acceptance and a confidence in the therapy as the patients as well as the doctors can follow up and see on the screen the dynamic changes during the therapy. It can be used by doctors as well as patients as I've mentioned and no errors in the therapy can occur. The parameter settings are automated and they are based on dynamic EDS measurements, so you cannot uh, commit any mistakes here. And it's just a one button operation and you have this nice pictorial color display and uh, that helps you to perform the treatment correctly and independently, um, no matter if you have uh, a, a lot of training in this field or not. Um, Concomitant other treatments can also be delivered at the same time to the patient and can be, of course, measured in their success. Um, it's very, very easy to use. And also, the good thing about this device is it also offers you great value. It's, it's the best price complex uh, systemic functional bioresonance system on the market that we know of. So a lot of great advantages and again, if you have further questions, don't worry, give us a call. We are always here for you to answer your questions and your concerns and help you with uh, finding the right uh, device for your needs and for your applications. So always, always, always contact us with any of your questions and, and any other additional information that you need. Uh, and uh, next, let's have a look at uh, what's going to Coming, be coming up in this series of presentations about how you become sick and uh, how you can remain healthy or rebalance yourself holistically. So in the next installment of this series, part three, uh, we will address specifically the detoxification and connective tissue matrix regeneration therapy. Uh, as already studied by Dr. Pischinger and Professor Dr. Claude Vincent, when patients have multiple chronic diseases, a multidimensional therapy must be administered. And that's what we're going to talk about, these multidimensional therapy approaches. Um, part of it is the adjustment of the basic acid balance or the pH value, the balancing of the redox potential with the creation of a surplus of electrons, and uh, adjustment of conductivity uh, and um, as our body includes uh, 
the, including the connective tissue is more than 78% water. It is very important um, to this step of the treatment is very important and uh, the, we're going to present to you some amazing therapeutic devices that take care of this multidimensional therapy. So I hope that uh, we're going to see and hear for each other again in the next installment of this series. Stay tuned. And as always, thank you for your attention. Please share, like, and subscribe if you enjoyed this presentation. There is much more to come from where this came from.